one of another level. Somebody say another level. And we're going to unpack how through relationship, connection, and communion with God, there is more for every one of our lives. Every one of our lives, we have access as daughters and sons to go to another level. There's an anchor verse that I have tagged and pinned to this weekend's services, James chapter 1, verse 17. It'll be on the screens. It says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change. How many of y'all are grateful for a God who does not change? Come on. People change. Seasons change. But we serve a God that does not change like shifting shadows. The title of week one of another level, if you're taking down notes, is Pray His Way. Pray His Way. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you give us ears to hear you. I thank you in 1 John chapter 5 that we have the ability through sonship as daughters and sons, we have a confidence when approaching you that anything we ask, and this is the key, according to your will, you hear us. So God, today I pray and we thank you that your word does not return to you void. And as we study your word today in this practical text, I pray, God, today that we would leave with a deposit that marks us, something that we can apply today and tomorrow and the rest of our week. Give us ears to hear you, a mind to understand. And most importantly, we need a heart to receive. Shout amen if you receive it. So we're gonna be talking about and focusing and unpacking this series about how we can encounter the fullness of God's favor and blessings in our life because we live in a really fast-paced, have your way microwave culture, but there's something that we often miss in the hustle and bustle of life, and the foundation is this. The foundation is prayer. Now, we covered this twice a year as a church family. We gather. We just did it a couple months ago. How many of y'all participated in 21 days of prayer and fasting? Come on, it was next level. How many of y'all felt the Spirit of God like moving in your life in August? The month of August is eight. Eight in the Bible means new beginnings. We feel like it is something that closes out the year strong. So we did it as a family. Nobody forced you to pray. We we thought about it. We were gonna send Dream Team out to knock on doors. Like, did you pray today? We're like, this is super creepy. (laughs) We didn't do that. But in January of every year, come on, somebody say January. Coming up January of 24, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna gather, and for 21 days, we're gonna pray and fast and believe through that foundation of prayer as we build on the rock that we're about to step into our greatest year ever. Come on, how many of y'all believe that 2024 is gonna be the greatest year of your life? And even if you don't believe it, prophesy it over your life. Because you do not just go through, survive, and celebrate the glory days. We believe the rest of your days really can be the best of your days. And so we're gonna be talking about prayer this weekend because as believers, It's not just about the right theology, although that is extremely important. We teach a sound doctrine here. It's not just about living above reproach, even though that's important. We are gonna talk about how we live in connection and daily communion with God and how the foundation of that is fully centered around a life of prayer. Elbow the person next to you and say, there's more, come on. Elbow your second choice and say, even for you too, come on. We believe that through prayer, a life of prayer, a foundation of prayer, connection and communion, we will be elevated. This is a beautiful thing. And we can grow in relationship and go to another level with our walk with the Lord. We can experience the supernatural in the natural part of our lives every single day. Where miracles are normal, where blessings and favor are a part of our everyday life. Where you don't have to just say, I don't know, man, I'm just super lucky. No, you can say, listen, I walk in the fog. Come on, somebody, I walk in the favor of God. Like my kids and my wife think it's crazy every time we pull into a parking lot. It can be completely packed. And I'm like, give me a minute. (laughs) Somebody's gonna move. I've had people walk out of places and be say, you want my spot? Just give me a second. I'm like, y'all, that's favor. Let's go. We're gonna be unpacking and talking about what it looks like to walk in that type of connection where miracles are normal where miracles break out in your life, where family dynamics are resolved and diagnosis is reversed. Come on, somebody. Where you can believe God and and through his word and his will, you can experience the supernatural in your life. When I read stories about men like Daniel, who because of his connection and daily communion with God, who was thrown in the lion's den, decided instead to take a nap. Now for me, the way I unpack this is that naps are biblical, amen. 
How many of y'all enjoy a nice nap? Come on, wave at me. After the Texans win today, we're going to take a nap. Come on. How many of y'all believe in God for a good nap? Now, for me, if I, like, uh, these people that do power naps, you'll just be standing there and they'll be like, we're like, what are you doing? I'm sorry, I was taking a nap. You're like, good Lord. With your eyes open? <laughs> that was so weird. My grandpa fan, and this has nothing to do with my message, but when he would take a nap, his tongue would come out. He'd be like, and so my brother was like, touch his tongue. It was weird. It was like touching a dolphin's tongue. It has nothing to do with my message. But for me, if I take a 15 to 20 minute nap, I just, I wake up upset. I want to fight. Like I was like, I'm picking fights with my neighbor. Like it's crazy. And then when you slip into like two hours, like that's a pretty strong nap. But if you go into three or four hours, you should just stay in bed. That's a call. That's called sleep. Like you should just be. Anyway, so Daniel's connection, he was able to take a nap. And then we read stories about men like Joshua, Joshua 10. Because of his communion and his daily connection with God, he had the ability in the midst of a war. He was able to say, God, would you pause the sun? Would you cause the sun to stand still? Because he knew if we don't defeat the enemy today, they will haunt us and terrorize us for generations to come. Because of his connection and his communion and his daily interaction through a relationship with God, he literally paused the sun in the sky to avenge, the enemy, to avenge his people. Then we read stories like Joseph, who experienced unprecedented favor throughout his life because of his prayer, communion, and connection with God. He experienced favor, and he experienced a favor that rested on him. And then I read stories. It's just the way I read the Bible. I read stories about men like Noah, who had the audacious faith to believe a God who was the almighty God to build an all-wooden boat and then had the audacious faith to invite two woodpeckers, two carpenter ants, and two termites. Y'all, that takes huge faith. Come on, somebody. All right, that's just the way I read the Bible. Okay, so throughout this series, we're going to experience, and we want you to understand that as the children of God, we can truly go to another level in our connection and our faith in God. But the truth is, miracles oftentimes hinge upon our connection to God's voice and God's timing and then we have to trust through faith in his faithfulness. And I love, if you're new to Hope City, uh, you, you, you'll learn today, your boy likes acronyms. I like to take words and break them down. And I love this acronym of the word pray because we're talking about praying his way. So the P, we're gonna break this down. You can take notes, you can take a picture when it pops up on the screen. The P equals praise. Praise. I love the quote that says, praise is more than an action. It's an attitude that says, no matter what season I'm in, I will remain grateful. No matter what season I'm in, because even in the lowest season of your life, there is something that is praiseworthy. There is something that says when you wake up and put your feet on the ground and take a deep breath and you say, God, I'm still breathing. I woke up again today. I give you praise for another day, another day to take territory, another day to step through this life and not just survive it, but I'm going to give you praise. And you've been so good. I'll give you praise now and you can do it later because you fought for me. You have defended me. You have shown up and you breathe life into me. There's always something you can give God praise over. But the reality is so much of the time, we allow the enemy to try to convince us that we're no longer blessed. So you lean towards pessimistic instead of praiseworthy. You lean towards behavior that says, ha, nothing else, nothing's going great. Really? You have gas in your car? Now, some of you poured Mountain Dew in there, hoping it would work too, amen. But <laughs> some of you are like, how did he know? This is crazy. There's always something you can give God praise over. My friend Brandon Lake wrote a song that we sing here often, and I'll throw up my hands, and I'll praise you again and again. Because at the end of the day, I may not have much, but I have my hallelujah. And I'll give you praise because you are worthy. And if Jesus never did anything else but hang on the cross, it would have been enough. Yeah, I feel like somebody should give God praise just right now. So David, who had his share of issues and struggles, he was also anointed to be king, but then went back out to be a shepherd. Over 10 years, he wondered if it would ever come to pass. This is what he writes in Psalm 63, verses 3 and 4, before he ever became king. He says, your unfailing love is better than life itself. This line here, how I praise you. 
I will praise you as long as I live. This is what we're talking about today. Lifting up my hands to you in prayer. Because again, even in your lowest place, we can always find a reason to praise. We can always find a reason to be grateful. There's a man I've preached often about. His name is Habakkuk. And some of you, if you're more seasoned than me, you're like, it's Habakkuk. Okay, <laughs> beautiful. But Habakkuk was a prophet. And at the end of the third chapter, Bible theologians unpacked this moment. And it said that he was praying, he was singing, and he was playing this series of verses we're about to read. And some of y'all are like, well, why is that important? It's important because he continued to praise even in the midst of the worst season he was ever walking through. Some of y'all are going to be able to relate to this. Now, you're not going to be able to apply some of it because he's talking from a coming kind of a firmer perspective, but I feel like the Holy Spirit can magnify this moment maybe for you that, wow, I can still find joy in the middle of this situation. I can still give God praise in the middle of this low place. This is what Habakkuk says in chapter 3, verse 17 and 19. It says, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food. Like some of you are like, my goodness, this is a really terrible song. It's like an old school country song. Like there's no sheep in the pen. There's no cattle in the stalls. It seems like he should just retreat. It seems like he should just run off and say, I guess God has forsaken me. But everything shifts in verse 18. He says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. He said, I will be joyful in God my Savior. There was something that he knew. Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is your. Come on, season saints. The joy of the Lord is your. Happiness you can create. Some of y'all are like, I just got off a cruise. Royal Caribbean right out of Galveston. That made me happy. It's awesome. But real joy is not something you can create in your own strength. Real joy is from the Lord. And that joy is from God to you and through you that becomes your strength. And Habakkuk says, even though I'm going through literal hell on earth, yet I will rejoice. And I will be joyful in God, my Savior. I've told this story before, but I remember being in the ER when they were doing emergency surgery on my beautiful bride to literally save her life. She had hemorrhaged after a miscarriage, and the medicine they gave her created this effect that was devastating. And I remember going to the ER bathroom, and I, I felt hopeless. I felt lost. I felt isolated and broken. And in those moments of isolation, the enemy wants to try to keep you stuck there. But when you lean on the things of God, the things that used to isolate you, God will breathe on that situation and actually elevate you to another level of faith. And I remember being so mad. Some of y'all have, have heard me tell this story. I was so mad. And by the way, God can handle your humanity. God can handle your humanity. He shaped and molded you. He created you in his image. I'll be honest. I was in that bathroom and I was mad. God, I've done all of this for you. I've I've reached thousands of people for you. I've always said yes to you. I've seen people healed and restored. We've seen people delivered. I've traveled the world telling people about you. When it says go into all the world, I have, I have never not said yes to you. Why now is this situation happening? And I went from this posture being upset to my hands lifted. I said, but I'll praise you anyway. And y'all, that took a lot of my humanity. I'm standing in this bathroom. This guy knocks on the door, and I was like, somebody's in here. Like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Because I was so human, too. <laughs> like, and I remember lifting my hand and singing, to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. To worship you. And I had a moment with the Lord that gave me a boldness and a confidence that I will praise you anyway. I will praise you no matter what it looks like because I've seen you 
move before. I've seen you fight for me more times than I can count. I've seen you show up. And that's where I said in that moment, you can do it later and I'm going to praise you right now. But I know in the aftermath, we're going to walk out of this hospital and we're going to walk out with a good report. The doctor and the surgeons that did the procedure said in 27 years of doing surgery in this situation, they said they felt a divine intervention from God. Come on, God is still fighting for us. He's still healing and restoring. So I'm choosing to praise him. There's so much power in your praise. Say out loud, my praise is a weapon. Your praise is a weapon. Never let the enemy put a, a lid on your ability to praise. Nobody is forcing you, by the way. That's the thing about free will. Like just a moment ago, y'all, Hope City Worship, ooh, another level, right? But nobody, we didn't have any of the dream team like, you better praise. My boy Alan wasn't back there like, if you don't lift your hands, I'm telling you right now. That's called a cult. Okay, that's not us. Amen. Nobody's forcing you to praise. That's a choice. First Peter 5, 6 is a choice to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Some of y'all are distracted like I'm going to crease my J's. Take it easy. Did you notice the posture was very smooth? Okay. <laughs> it's a choice to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. It's a choice to say, I'll praise you anyways. It's a choice. Come on, say, it's a choice. It's a choice. Your praise is a weapon. And when you shift your worry into worship, when you turn your pessimism into praise, God will turn every battle in your life into a breakthrough. If you receive it, shout amen. Come on. All right, the R in pray, back to the acronym. Come on, the R is, this is a word that's kind of become a little bit of a legalistic word. It's repent. This is not about legalism. It's about relationship. It's about a daily surrender that says, God, am I okay with you? I was driving in my truck yesterday, and I just said, have you ever noticed that maybe his voice isn't as loud in your life? You haven't felt that nudge? Because by the way, you all, we all, all of us have access to the same Holy Spirit. He's always speaking, but there are things contending for our attention to the point where you don't maybe hear him. So we have to repent. Lord, I repent. The lady who was caught in adultery, they're lining up. They're about to stone her. They're testing Jesus. And Jesus says, cool, cool. I'll tell you what, the one without sin Go ahead and throw this first stone at her. Let's go. And one by one, these gentlemen dropped their pet rocks. Said, oh, maybe, maybe tomorrow. Because <laughs> they all had junk in their trunk. <laughs> like, they all had stuff hidden. They all had stuff compartmentalized, right? And he said, woman, well, your sins are forgiven. And then this is what he says. Go and sin no more. To repent, to truly surrender, is to turn away to turn away. I, I've been shocked at the conversations throughout the years of people that love to tell me their testimony, and their testimony isn't like, I'm growing in God, I'm being discipled, I've gone through Bible school, I'm learning more theology. It's like, boy, you could have seen me Woo, back in the day. I used to have a fever, and the only prescription was more dancing at the club. I could out drink everybody. Like they're telling, I'm like, what is happening? And they're like, woo, <laughs> you got to see. You gotta see. Well, what are you doing now? I read the Bible. I do. I read the Bible a lot. I pray. I pray. Uh, they had a little women's gathering. I showed up to it. And, uh, and uh, I came Saturday night and Sunday. So I'm hoping to get my G Wagon now. <laughs> like, no, we almost talk about. Those days as the glory days, and this is what the Bible says. Watch this, Acts 3, verse 19 in the Amplified. So repent, that's the word. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking. Regret past sins. Not because of condemnation, but because you've grown. I got great news. You're growing, and it's uncomfortable. I got bad news. You're growing, and it's really uncomfortable. And that's a good place to be. To look back and say, look at what God has done. My dad, who is now clean over 40 years, give it up for my dad who watches every week for 40 years. When he tells stories about him being once bound, I was once blind, but now I see. 
I was once held captive. I was in shackles and chains by the enemy. He had a grip of addiction on my life. But look at what God has done. I'm telling you, to be in the light of God, to experience his righteousness, to walk in holiness, to walk into a room and feel the power and the authority of God on you, there's nothing on this earth that can pull you so far away from God that you can't come into his presence and be completely restored. And then when you're restored, oh, shout about it. Tell everybody about it. I was once bound. I was once lost, but now I'm found. So it goes on and says, Regret past sins. Return to God. Seek his purpose for your life so that your sins may be wiped away, blotted out, completely erased. This line right here had me shouting in my Jeep on the drive-in last night so that times of refreshing, come on, how many of y'all need to refresh? Come on, like a, like a fresh wind behind your sail. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And in this verse the Amplified specifically, I feel like is for us Houstonians. If you're watching around the world, you have no idea what we've endured this summer. Restoring you, it says it, like a cool wind on a hot day. Somebody shout amen. Come on. So this is what happens. We acknowledge who he is. but Through self-awareness, we recognize who we are. We recognize that he's perfect. He's sinless. He's kind. He's forgiving. And we, unless you're perfect and I want to meet you, I'm going to pray for you because you're a liar. (laughs) We all fall short of all these things. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can grow and be more like Jesus. Come on, how many of y'all want to go to another level? Come on, give God praise if you want to go to another level. You can go. You can grow. And you can get better every day because his way is so much better. All right, number three, the A in this acronym. We're back to it. The A is ask. Ask. The Bible says in Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Now, again, these are prayers we pray according to his will. That's why I referenced 1 John 5, verse 14 earlier, that we have a confidence when approaching God. You've heard me talk about this before. That anything we ask, that's the word, according to his will, he hears us. God, I pray that you, uh, Lord, let something come out about Lindsay so she gets fired and I get her job. That's, that's, That's probably a selfish, motivated prayer. Let me ask this question. This is a loaded question. If all your prayers that you've prayed recently came to pass this week, how many of them would affect someone else other than you? How often do you pray for others? How often do you ask God, Lord, I pray that you give me increase so that I can be a blessing to someone else. God, it would be amazing if my house payment or my rent is paid and I can be a blessing to someone else. God, let me send someone on a mission trip. Let me sow into this initiative. Let me be a part of what you're doing here at Hope City. Let me go and serve because Jesus said it's better to give and serve than it is to receive. How often are we praying for others. How often do we encounter people who are walking through something and they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm going through this. You're like, Oof, it's too bad. Okay. <laughs> and how often do we say, hey, can I pray for you right now? I pray for waiters and waitresses. I pray for baristas. I pray for neighbors. I pray for a neighbor the other day. He came by and was talking about how good our yard looked because man, I've been putting some time into it. And I said, I can pray that your yard would be better. And he said, what? I was like, nothing, never mind. He seemed creeped out. He seemed a little creeped out, I'll be honest. (laughs) But if your posture of prayer is always about you, you're missing out on one of the greatest relationships you could ever have with the Lord. How often are you praying for others? Got to pray for so-and-so who's a single mom who's just trying to make make it through life. God, I pray, Lord, that you would bless her this week, that you would show your favor to her this week, that you would keep her and protect her babies this week. How often are you praying for for others. I, uh, I have a friend who goes to Hope City, and after my Bible study, I followed him out in the parking lot. I said, hey, man, I just want to thank you. Um, there was a need that we uh, put an ask out into our Bible study, and it was to sponsor some youth to go to summer camp. We had about 30 kids that could not afford to go to camp last year. That was a lot. 
And we sold out of camp. It was phenomenal. And so we just kind of put it out there. And I thought maybe a couple guys would say, I'll sponsor one, I'll sponsor two. And there was two guys that just kind of surfaced and said, hey, uh, we want to be a part. Well, this one gentleman in particular, I thanked him. I said, man, thank you. And then I said this, why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? And he said this. He said, every day when I'm praying, I have a little list of how I pray. And I asked the Lord months ago, Lord, if you're going to move in this area, if you're going to do something in our church, if you're going to show up, let me be a part of it. I commit to you now, and I say yes to whatever you ask of me, and I'm asking that you would bless me with more so that I could be a blessing. He said, I'm a tither. I'm generous with my giving. I'm generous with my time. But this was kind of an over-above sort of scenario. He said, then when you pose the question, would anybody want to be a part of helping some of these kids go to camp? He said, I did what everybody does in our humanity. I went to my bank account. I said, okay, Lord. Amen. Okay, well, I said yes, and I asked you to provide, and I'm going to follow through on my word because I know you're going to follow through on yours. And he said, Pastor Daniel, this is crazy. He said, within a week and a half, I had an increase hit my life that I hadn't experienced all year and I had more than enough, and not only was I gonna just sponsor a couple kids, but between those two gentlemen, they sponsored all 30 kids. Let's go, somebody. It's amazing. But he said there's power, not only in your yes, but there's power in the ask. God, what would you have me do? And it's that willingness. It's that open-handed posture. That's why we're a spirit-filled, life-giving church, and we're a tithing church. We talk about tithing here. Because we believe that when you release what's in your hands, God can release what's in his. And here's the reality. Here's kind of a newsflash. It all belongs to him anyways. All of it. I like to think this beard is mine. It's the Lord's. Amen. (laughs) So we are a church that believes that we return the 10% back because it helps the gospel continue to go. And then above that, we're generous with our, our, our resources through our offerings, our missions initiatives. And this is the part oh, it's a little tough for people. We're also generous with our time. We're asking God, Lord, open-handed, like the Claytors talked about last week, I trust you. So I, it may be time for you to get off the sidelines. Maybe you know there's a need, and you're like, oh, I could fill that need. I could jump in. I could serve. I could be a part. Maybe you've been sitting on the sidelines, and God said, hey, it's your time. You love me. You love people. Now let's all together change the world. Let's reach our city. Let's do whatever it takes. But when's the last time you have stepped away from your comfort zone and stopped just asking the Lord to do things for you? You actually started doing something for others. I'm stepping on some toes. Some of you are like, this is good. I thought this was going to be a little funnier, though. I'll be honest. All right, the last letter of this acronym, Y, I love this one, is yield. Now, this is super practical. Like, you could potentially hear this off of a Veggie Tales but I really do believe that we can apply this almost in real time. Because we all have a choice to praise. We all have a choice to repent. We all have a choice to ask. And this one right here, yield. To yield is to slow down. It doesn't mean stop, but in our fast-paced culture, I tell you the thing that seems to mess up a lot of Houstonians and people that drive are those little roundabouts that say yield. We get so mad. And then you get mad at the person that stops, and you're like, no, no, you're supposed to just yield. You can still go. Like, and then that person stops, and then they go, and they stop again, and you're like, I almost ran into you. That's why I feel like certain people should drive Nerf cars, so we just bump them and keep moving. But yield is to, it's to almost pause. It's to slow down for a minute. Because in our fast-paced culture, when's the last time you've Slow down to just listen to the voice of God. I said it a moment ago, I'm gonna say it again. We all have access. The voice of God is always speaking. He's always speaking, but because so many things are muddying the waters of our ability to hear him, we maybe haven't, watch this, tuned our attention to his voice. We were on a trip, a road trip with family, and we, we found a radio station. Y'all had all the songs. Like, we, it was amazing. We loved it. And we're singing along, and it's like, this is good. And it, it's like, well, and it's like, pick up a mattress today. And we're like, and we're like what is happening? We were getting further and further away from the source. 
thing that was broadcasting the signal, we were getting a little too far away from it, and we lost the signal. We no longer could hear it because we no longer were connected to the source. That's why John 15 is so important, that he's the vine, we're the branches. If we, that's a choice, remain in him and him in us, we will bear much fruit. Are you connected to the source? Because if you haven't heard his voice in a while, maybe you should reevaluate and just yield and say, God, what's in my life that has pulled me away from the source? We used to have a walkie-talkie set up in situation. We used to tour. For those of you who know, we used to do music. I traveled all over the world, and we were in a bus, and we had these cool slide-outs on the bus, and we were on this worship tour, and we were somewhere in Colorado, and so we had this walkie-talkie set up because phones were too advanced. The walkie-talkies were faster. And so uh, inside the bus, it'd be like, Shh. Okay, slide opening now. And then we have guys outside to make sure that the slides weren't opening into like a big rock or a boulder or a wall or something. And so sometimes we would talk on the walkie talkies and she'd say, Ksh, hey. And I'd say, Ksh, hey. And she'd say, Ksh, what are you doing? I'd say, Ksh, who is this? And she's like, Ksh, it's your wife. Like, some of you are like, that's ridiculous. You didn't know? I didn't know. Because from the moment she, she said, hey, I knew it was her. Why? Because I'm in tune with her voice. Same is true of him. The presence of the living God, are you tuned into his voice so that he could say, hey, don't go left, I need you to go right. Hey, let me put a light on this path. Let me show you, Proverbs 16, 9, that in your heart you determine your course, but the Lord establishes your steps. Are you in tune? Are you taking a moment to just yield and listen to his voice? This is what John 10, 27 says. My sheep, that's God talking about us. Everybody say, bah, that's ridiculous. You don't have to do that. <laughs> I want to see if you would do it. That was amazing. All right. <laughs> My sheep, that's you, listen to my voice. He says this, I know them. They follow me. They listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. In our own lives, we have to learn to yield, which means we have to come into alignment with what God says. This is hard for us to, this is a hard pill to swallow in our humanity. It's not always about what you want. It's not always about what you want. It takes discernment to know where God is on the matter, and then we have to align ourselves with him. It's on the screens. When you come into alignment with God, his favor will come into alignment with you. The assignment starts from God. Thank you. I accept the assignment. But the alignment, that's us. So is there something in your life that's put a lid on your praise? So something that's keeping you so bound and isolated and full of shame that you haven't come back to the arms of God and simply repented? So something going on in your life where you're so selfishly motivated in your prayer life that you're only asking for things for you? When's the last time you've taken a moment to yield? And simply listen to the voice of God. Will you close your eyes just for a moment? God, I pray that you would meet us where we're at right now. I felt... The revelation of this weekend, strong. Because there's always something that we can give you praise. There's always an area that we can find where maybe we have felt deficient in, but we can look back down memory lane and see all of the areas that you've been better than good to us. And God, if there's anything in our lives that we need to let go of, surrender, 1 Peter 5, 7, cast our cares on you and repent because maybe we've opened the door to some areas of our lives. Maybe we've allowed some decisions to take root and those weeds are starting to smother out the good fruit. Maybe we haven't asked you in a while to be a blessing through our lives to help someone else. And maybe we haven't yielded. Maybe we haven't been listening. Maybe we've pulled away and disconnected from the source and that whole static analogy. Yeah, that kind of stuck, that kind of stood out a little bit because. Maybe you've been in a, in, a, in a position or a spot where you're like, I haven't heard from him in a long time. Even that, that nudge, that intuition, that gut check, you don't have to hear the audible voice of God, but when's the last time you have just felt his presence? Would you stand to your feet and would you lift your hands? I've left enough margin on the clock today to apply this in real time. 
If you can find something to give him praise over, can you lift your hands towards heaven? Again, nobody's going to force you. Don't disconnect. I'm telling you, there is freedom in this moment. There's breakthrough in this moment. There's deliverance in this moment. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, nothing else fit for, fit for a king, except for our heart singing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, even bolder, every campus. I throw up my hands. I throw up my hands. Praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is I will praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I know. every day to throw up our hands and choose to praise no matter what it looks like no matter what season I'm in my attitude will be an attitude of gratitude that says I'm grateful the second thing I want to apply is the heart of repentance maybe you're here and there's been some stuff holding you back maybe you've been bogged down by shame Maybe there's some stuff in your life that you are ashamed of and you have compartmentalized that pain and you've put a facade on like everything's okay right now with every eye closed. If you need to let go of something, repent right now. It says to confess your sins. And it says that he is faithful and just. Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, to forgive you. Wipe your slate clean. He's writing victory in your story. I love this song that says... There is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is. I love this next line. Come on, as we repent, watch this. It says, to break every chain. I feel deliverance in the house. Come on, say a boulder. There is power in the name. There is power. There is power. In Come on, just let go of it now. Just cast those cares. Just repent right now and say. So I thank you that shame is not our future anymore. That this brokenness is not my future anymore. But deliverance and freedom and restoration I can walk in. Come on, if you believe that, can you just give God praise right now for praise, then repentance. And then this is the third step I want to ask. 
Right now, would you do something to step out of your motivation that is more me, myself, and I, with every eye closed, can you just pray and ask God to move on somebody else's behalf? Maybe that's a friend, a family member, a neighbor, a coworker. Just begin to pray for them. Pray, pray for them by name. God, I thank you right now for, I pray, God, that you would move in their life that you're their provider, that you're their protector, that you're their healer. God, that you're showing up and fighting for them. Exodus 14, 14. In situations, God, that they feel overwhelmed and almost overtaken by. God, I thank you for, say their name, and just begin to pray for them right now. God, we thank you as we ask, according to your will, that you deliver, that you restore, that you heal, that you encourage, that you breathe a refreshing touch like we read about in Acts, verse three, like a cool wind on a hot day, move in their life. Now switch it and begin to ask as a daughter and a son, through the confidence that you have, through trust, equity, and relationship, why don't you begin to ask him for some things in your own life right now, that according to his will. God, I pray right now that you're meeting that all who ask, all who knock, all who posture and position themselves in a posture of faith. God, I pray right now that you meet them right where they're at. God, let this be on October 8th, 2023, a defining, marking day, God, that we can look back on a year, two years, three years from now. God, I thank you that you're breathing on businesses, that you're breathing on marriages, that you're breathing on families, that you're breathing, on God, on, on relationships, maybe that got caught up in the prodigal life, that you're breathing on diagnoses, God, and you're healing and delivering and restoring. God, that you're breaking off addictions God, I pray that today, as we ask according to your will, that you're showing up, that you're flexing, that you're throwing your weight around this room, and you're moving and doing what only you can do. All right, now the last one. Just keys and our attention. With your eyes closed just for a moment, I want to yield. I just want you to listen. Tune your ear, tune your spirit. Tune your heart. Align right now with the Lord. Speak, O oh Lord. We are listening. Reveal your presence. We are listening. Reveal your spirit. We are listening. Just yield, just yield. Just lean in, Katie. Lean in, Woodlands. Lean in at home. Lean in, West Houston. Just, just listen. I'm telling you, God is speaking right now. Some of you feel the still, small voice of the Lord. You feel that nudge. towards heaven and just let him speak to you. Can we give him praise? Come on, as we praised him, we've repented, we're asking, and we're yielding. So I wanted to walk that out as we were bringing this into a close today, that this is something we can apply every day. Yesterday, driving the church, I literally did this. I was praising him in my Jeep. I repented for some frustrations that maybe I've been holding on to. I began to ask for God to move in some areas of other people's lives, and then I began to shift it and ask for some things that were personal, and then I just yielded. And I said, speak, O Lord. Your servant is listening. Something we can apply every day. Did y'all get something out of today's word for week one of another level? Beautiful. Before we close, nobody leaving just yet, the reason we do all of this, the reason why we turn gymnasiums into sanctuaries at Katy, West Houston, and our Woodlands campus, 
because we always wanna give you an opportunity to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Two invitations, maybe the first one is you don't know Jesus, but you want to for the first time. The Bible says in Romans 10, verses nine and 10, that when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. It's that simple. It cost you no money, it just takes surrender. Maybe the second invitation, you'd say, Pastor Daniel, here's the truth, I used to walk with the Lord. I used to praise him. I used to be really good about repenting. I used to be really good about asking and even listening and yielding, but I got caught up in the prodigal life. And I wanna come back to the arms of God today. Pastor Brandon mentioned it earlier, but today is also Baptism Sunday. So if you wanna take your next step in your profession publicly in your faith in God, we take all the guesswork out of it for you. But if you wanna give your life to Jesus for the first time with every eye closed, if you're watching online, you can say yes to Jesus, our team will help. Two, you wanna rededicate your life. I wanna come back to the arms of God today. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? I'm looking all over the room. I see you and you and you. I see you, I see you, you and you. I see you back there. I see you over there. Amazing, I see you here in the middle. I see you. Come on, Hope City, I love it. A bunch of hands just went up and said, I wanna give my life to God for the first time or rededicate. This is all about aligning. So we're aligning our lives for the first time or in a rededicated state. But everybody pray this prayer. Come on, everybody right now, say this out loud. Jesus, today I'm surrendering everything. All my shame, all my struggles, every sin, all my issues, even ones that are hidden. I give them all to you because you're big enough and strong enough to restore me. Jesus, thank you for exchanging your life for mine because you said I was valuable. You said I was worth it. From this moment on, I'm gonna live for you. You are my Father. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on.